Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. on a couple of hover tanks that have been sitting on my hobby bench for way too long. I've been meaning to get these done. These are a uh, third Canopian Fusiliers. I'll be doing a basically an olive drab green and a gold scheme with uh, the gray skirts there. And then later on I'm going to do some freehand work on another tutorial video. Um, they've been sitting for a long time and even the past couple months on my desk. I've got a, uh, a non makeup used makeup brush. Uh, so I like to use that to dust off a miniature that's been sitting for a while just so that I don't end up with any little flakes or obviously dust particles and things like that. It just helps me make sure that I don't get any of that in the paint or if I were to start with a wash or something like that. So that's what I'm doing. playing around with the lights. I got a diffuser over my light now. Obviously the black backdrop, but it still reflects a little bit of wash into the camera. So if I move too much stuff around, it kind of changes the brightness. Yeah, Ray, uh, Roy, I've been seeing your uh, uh, Flames of War stuff, man. It's been looking pretty good. So keep that up, man. I'm, I'm jealous that you're getting more progress than I am. Uh, all right, so quick rundown on what I've done with this guy so far. Uh, it's basically a uh, gray base coat on the skirts using model air base gray. I've got Reaper Master Series uh, Muddy Olive is the green. And then for the yellow soon to be gold highlights, that's just a base of uh, Reaper Master Series high density Pale saffron. So I could have used a light brown. I could have used, you know, a bronze or something like that. But uh, I actually wasn't sure what I was going to paint these with for, at first. So, and then uh, you can see there's some weathering uh, already. That's uh, not painted. That's just a wash. I did a uh, coverage wash on this. I'm assuming a brown ink is what it looks like. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't write that part of my recipe down. I've got my book here. Yeah, it doesn't sh doesn't show it, but. Uh, as a, it's obviously a dark wash. It, it could either be black or it could be a dark brown. Uh, looks to be, might be a little bit of both. So anyway, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start with the metallics just because I tend to be kind of goofy and messy with those. And if I get any metallic on the green, it's easy to touch up because I'm gonna paint the green anyway. Um, so I'll get those out of the way first. And since they would show up the most, that's my methodology with that. So like I said, brass, is what I'm, I could have used. I'm gonna use this brass over the gold, or the yellow, I should say, then move to gold, and then move into a bit of a gold-silver mix um, using model color brass gold and model air silver. Really good, really good colors. So. I've just got a, uh, again, seen this one before, a low Cornell cheap uh, number one brush there from Hobby Lobby, or Michael's one of the two. Got some water and I'm gonna get uh, get this going. Let me get a different color dish, I think. That might help with washing out the camera. But... Oh, I always write down what I use. I just 
I must have washed and not put down exactly what I had done. I guess I get about 80 to 90% of what I usually am doing. Uh, there are some times when I just don't feel like writing everything down because I'm not planning on doing a whole scheme. Um, that, uh, that chronoscope rep uh, miniature I did a few days ago, I was just like, I just want to paint. I just want to mess around and not worry about stopping to write stuff down. So that's what I did. I don't always do that. Obviously, if I want to repeat it, I'd have to go back and think about it, but, uh, you know. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Got some thin brass, and I am just going to hit. I'm not looking to get a super thick coverage. I'm just looking to get something reflecting. Look, I already got it on the, on the gray, so. Uh, in fact, if I were smart about this, I'll grab my other brush, alternate brush, try to wipe some of that away so I don't have as much work to do later. It's a little trick that you can do. It tends to get a little bit of water everywhere, but if you move on to a different spot, you can kind of pick up a lot of your mistakes. There'll still probably be some metallic flakes there, and I'll still have to go over it, but I'm going to highlight the hot top edge anyway. So you get to watch me mess up in real time. It's probably a little too thin. I'm actually going to add a little more paint. drop into there. All right. Don't need it walking away from me. So this unit's colors are obviously green and gold. It doesn't say light green, doesn't say dark green. If you look on the Camo Specs website, there's lots of more of a vibrant green, but I just thought a olive, kind of a military looking color. I mean, it's got gold highlights on it. It's not hiding, but it'll, well, and I'll lighten it up with some, some green highlights, but I don't feel compelled to make the thing bright lime green or something a little more ostentatious. See, I haven't even really reloaded my brush. I'm just thin coat just to get the metallic down. And that'll really uh, merge well with the gold. Nebulous, all of this far more tactical. That is exactly right. We want to go tactical tanks, right? Of course, we've got jade turkeys and blood spirits, you know, white, red, you know, might as well be a bullseye. I'm going to be as careful on these little ridges because I know I'm going to need to drop some darker colors in there. Also, not too concerned about any metallic on the front of the missile launchers because I'm probably going to do a little bit of a uh, chipped metal and then a bit of a carbon buildup effect so that'll that'll get messed around with later so I like to have a plan for what I'm doing so that if I go and mess something up and or if, at least if I go in a direction I know hey I can make that up later I do try to minimize the amount of duplicating work obviously but uh, there are some times when I change my mind midway through but all right so that's the first one yes I said jade turkeys I'm not any sort of like, oh, I hate this or that, honestly, but I, I do enjoy the the ribbing that goes back and forth between all the different folks that are dedicated to one faction or another, and with good reason. I mean, you know, if you're really into one one uh, clan or house or, you know, in any game, really, it's, you know, it's cool. It's good to have enthusiasm. It's good to be into something so that you're almost have like a level of, of pride just not, I'm out of practice is what I am. I am sloppy. This one might not come up. Oh well. Yeah, I figured you would, Roy.
guys like the new black background a little better? Does it help with the uh, kind of allowing you to see what I'm working on instead of having a total white wash in the back behind everything? I'm all about feedback and comments. I'm not going to do something that nobody likes or change into something, but I saw another uh, couple of painters do this with the black background, and I thought it looks a lot, uh, a lot more contrast to the model and where they're working vice, you know, having a whole lot of uh, bright white behind the model, which I thought was you know, maybe getting a little bit more, uh, I don't know, subdued on the actual paintwork, especially if you were painting, say, I don't know, a white miniature. I guess if I was painting a black miniature, I would need to figure out if I was going to do a ba <laughs> black background, but it's a piece of construction paper, so it's easily moved. Yeah, that, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking too, Roy. Is that uh, it's going to be situational. the audio okay? Can you hear me okay over the, the music? I've kind of got my other laptop running MechWarrior 2 soundtracks in the background, but if it's washing out my voice or if it sounds tinny or crappy, then I'm adjusted. Switch over to gold. Heavy Guard, thanks. Welcome. Appreciate you watching. Dreary, I see you've joined me too. I've got my tablet up on my table so I can kind of look up and see that instead of craning my neck over to my laptop that's running the streaming and the recording. So if I miss something, I apologize, but you can call me out on it later or just keep asking until you get a response. Alright, working with some gold. Again, I'm going to thin it out to about the same consistency. I might do two coats of this, but we'll see. See how it lays down. And I'm keeping the, the palette kind of out of the camera view, view because if you watch, when I do this, it kind of changes the light dynamic. I don't know of a way to fix that or if I need another diffuser layer over my light, but uh, something to deal with later on. Barely audible, okay. about as loud as I'm going to make it, because I'll, I'll, I'll go insane if I have to try to think over myself, but it'll start up another song here in a little bit. So now I'm doing the gold, and I'm trying to just, if I can, just leave the ever so slightest amount of brass just on the bottom layer. That'll give like a nice um, false sense of shading, which I may, I'll still go over this with a a wash but basically as I go now I'm working at putting less and less lighter color as we go higher to to create that reflecting metallic look so I'm really not putting much paint down so on the thin ones there's not a whole lot I can do about that I'll let the wash do the work for me on that one careful on these guys now. I'm just going to hit the tops of each one. Probably the last time I'll 
touch that bottom lip there because I don't think it's going to need any silk on it. Yeah, I think it's the white auto balance. I don't know if there's a way for me to change that setting or not. I don't have a whole lot of controls on this Logitech camera unless there's maybe some different software or an add-on that I could do, but I just haven't found one. And Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Yeah, Nebulas. I, I, I was thinking about that. Unfortunately, it was about 20 minutes ago, and the last thing I want to do is break the setup and then not even be able to have the thing doing what I want it to do. So uh, I will definitely mess around with that and try to get that to stop doing what it's doing because I would love a stable light um, light level because I'm not doing anything with my lamp and I know I've seen other painters on Twitch and other feeds man I really goofed this up didn't I paint, paint better paint better about good, Roy. Just more proficient or better practiced? I don't know. Just blame the fact that I've got a camera half, halfway in front of my view. Of course, it's always like that, so get over it. level achievement unlocked. Yeah, it's the C930, I think. Gaming software? All right. Yeah, thanks, Nebulas. I'll look into that because I obviously am tired of it. <laughs> All right. So we got the gold laid down, so now we're starting to get a nice metallic. Now we're going to add a highlight. So I'm going to take about the equal pr promotion or portion of this uh, silver, and I'm going to throw that in with my gold that I still have in my dish here. Thin it out just a little bit. That's going to lighten up that gold. Quite a bit. I'll show you the color here in a second once I get it mixed still going to look silver, but there is a hint of gold in it. In fact, it might not be quite enough gold, actually. I think I might have put too much silver in. There we go. should have a goldish hue to it. I'm not looking for bright silver. The uh, Viejo Air Silver is really, it's really good polished silver. It works really well. All right. Let's see here. So that's what I'm looking at. Let me show you the plain silver just to give you a contrast. You can see it's definitely got a gold hue to it. down with a Windsor Series 7, my go-to favorite brush. It's the uh, Miniature Series. I've had this brush forever. I have several replacements for it, but this one has just held up great. I know using metallic is the easiest or best thing for a natural hair brush, but the details are tiny and I keep messing up, so let's fix that. So now I'm just going to look for the top edge. 
as I say that, I've got an error already. Man, I am, I am off today. No checkers for me later, huh? Nothing super detailed. Having a hard enough time with panels. I expect more fear, sarcasm, and ridicule out of you guys about that. You should be taunting me relentlessly for making all these mistakes. Fixable mistakes, but mistakes nonetheless. I guess it only matters on what the end result is. Yeah, I, I, I feel you, Roy. I'm still not recovering from maybe the last set. Even even black and black and white ones are definitely getting to on my list of things I don't want to do anytime soon, but just trying to hit that top edge. It's still going to have some gold because I'm putting it on thin, so it's going to look it's really catching the light. <laughs> Doing what I'm supposed to do, but and I might come back in with a little more gold after the highlight just to tone some of that silver down, but we'll see. Because I'm gonna put that wash on it, so brush the splint. Yeah, but I mean, as long as you learn from your mistakes, I mean, I made tons of mistakes. Heck, I still make mistakes I don't even know about. I don't even know. I don't even know what I don't know. I watch videos and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I've been doing it wrong for the last three decades. Well, two and a half decades. I'm not quite that old yet. Yeah. So I'll come back with the... We'll, we'll see how that wash does, and then I'll come back with that gold maybe a little later, but let's get both of these knocked out. So what are you guys working on on your paint desk? I know, Roy, you've got some Flames of War stuff. What's next? Some Panzers, some Stugs? I painted some Stugs a while back, like a couple of years ago. Several years ago, actually, I eBayed them. Just wanted to paint tanks and do something different. Panzer threes and fours, good ones. Infantry, how many infantry you got? <laughs> Bunch of unseens, yep. I feel ya. I got a bunch of unseens I'm trying to get rid of. Sold a bunch. I need to get rid of some more. I'm just using some Master's Brush Soap. This is my favorite brush, and the reason it's gonna stay that way is because I take good care of it. Just work that lather in. I keep water in the top of the thing so the soap is always soft, so I'm not mashing the brush into hard soap. Y'all are wondering why it looks like a bowl of snot.
Imperial Assault. 3029 Kelhounds, nice. Oh, and Crescent Hawks, very cool. little soldier dudes. I'm going to do an infantry tutorial, but it won't be 15 millimeters, so you're out of luck on that, but there's plenty of support for Kings, or, uh, Kings, <laughs> uh, Flames of War. I'm using the, uh, Strong Tone. Sorry, I'm not sure. Saga used bo uh, water bottle caps. Maybe I need to switch to that. wash mixing medium. I just bought this. I'm going to try it out and see if it helps me out. Especially in those vents on the front of the tank. I should have just a drop to that. And make a drop of quick shade up through in the dish here. that happen. a lot better. either. Here's where I'm going to pay attention though. I want to definitely get it into these cracks and crevices here. Yeah, yeah, it's tank treads, man. That's definitely a area where you can have all kinds of, quote, mistakes, but can still look like they should. Bunch of beat up metal covered in mud, dirt.
see if I can't get a better look at this for y'all. That's the max extent of my zoom. Looks like a reflective goal to me. describe the difference between a wash or a quick taint quick taint, no, I don't want to say that quick paint uh, some of the uh, quick shades the army painter out of the bottle so let's see I've got oh yeah here we go so I've got a Viejo wash I can't see the screen got a Viejo wash and I've got the army painter quick shade this is a thicker out of the bottle material. It's much, I think, less uh, loose if you were to describe the way the paint flows. So I typically add uh, flow improver to things that I wanna make a wash out of, like future floor polish. This this I don't add to it because I don't like the way it reacts with that, but I think that's what that uh, medium, quick shade wash mixing medium kind of helps with. It, this does a good job though of going into the cracks and things, but uh, it can settle, I think, on the surface panels a little bit more easily if you're not paying attention, if you try to do too much at once and not manage each specific area. And then this, uh, you know, a wash, I mean, it's it's designed to be, you know, either target wash or coverage wash, things like that. But, um, I mean, I would say this is a, you know, out of the bottle, the washes tend to be a lot less thick. I'm trying to think of the viscous terminology, but Anyway, someone smarter than me. But uh, I'm gonna let those dry completely. And uh, I think what we'll do, is since the gray, I'll work on the, well, no, I'm gonna do the green because I don't wanna get hung up on the gray. People have seen me paint gray before. So I'm planning on using this uh, goblin green and olive green as my two build up colors. Uh, probably not pure goblin green simply because I think it will just need to have a little bit of the muddy olive into it just to get it a little more uh, I guess drabby is a good way to describe it but uh, this is this is a kind of a brighter green but for I mean it's still got a bit of an olive shade to it but I think this doesn't necessarily flow with the uh, the three tones I'm trying to use and trying to get a good end highlight there and I don't want to go like with some extreme highlights but I would like it to look you know smooth so when you show these three colors up against each other you've got you know it's, it's a bit of a jump between these two so I'll probably add a drop to every like two or three for this one and then from that point it'll probably be somewhere between a 50-50 mix between these two and then maybe a edge highlight here or there with just pure olive um, but that won't be very much at all so Shake them up. All right, so I'll have those ready to go here. I'm gonna go back to the gold. So I think this looks dry enough. And I am going to thin it down. It's, no, it's too dry. I'll have to start another batch. Fortunately, having all these lights on and working through these paints, it uh, tend to get a little bit dried out. I usually tend to do them a little better, so I'm just going to work right here. Move this out. want to 
little, little more water. Now what I'm doing is basically I'm just throwing this, it's almost a gold glaze, if you want to think of it that way. I'm not adding glaze medium, but I'm looking at just putting this over to merge that silver and that gold brass color, just so that there's not any sort of hard line, because when I go to photograph this, when it's done, it's going to show a lot more of the transitions or what I think are transitions, but I'm literally just kind of picking that line on the high side there, letting it go into the silver. And if I wanted to be do extreme highlights, I could come back and just do like pure silver right on the very edge here, or maybe down here. I don't know, we'll see how it looks at the end, but I can always go back and just do those. I mean, that's a five minutes of just, you know, a little dab of paint here or there. Just so you know my thought process. sloppy. I mean, obviously the mistakes I've been making are just, I'm just being clumsy tonight apparently. I don't know. Maybe I had too much caffeine today. It was arm day at the gym, so you know, i got a plethora of excuses. But all things being equal. I would like to improve my level of accuracy while increasing my rate. Also started to get over the idea that everything is a showpiece. That is also not the case. I would love to have large force on the table but it didn't take me three decades to finish the game has died which I've had happen with other games bought plenty of miniatures painted a few and now I'm putting that stuff up on eBay just a little more right here So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna clean out my palette. That's drying. Little trick I learned. Take these little paper towels. Take out most of it. And then what's left, I have a bottle, a dropper bottle of just uh, isopropyl alcohol. I drop that all over it. Let it sit for just a few moments while I take that other uh, paper towel away. Especially with metallics, it makes such a mess. Yeah, Roy, I'm jealous. too uh, detail-oriented for too long. And that's not to say that it's a bad thing, it's just that 
there are certain things I have to be willing to accept at a level of painting if I want to be able to actually use a painted army. And there's you know some methods out there that I've been kind of watching videos on or people talk about. It's like, hey, you know, you can paint your army or your force or whatever it may be. And then to a certain level and then, you know, clear coat it. And then come back to it later when you have more time and work on those models as you want to add details to. You see how easily that kind of cleaned up. I know you guys are watching me clean, but maybe this might be useful to someone to see how I do it. Like I said, there's folks I've seen that use like bottle caps or tiles and things like that. And I'm sure that's probably a more efficient and expeditious way, but today we're using this. Maybe tomorrow I'll be using water bottle caps. I don't know. paper towel. Clean up the brush here. Clean up all these while I'm at it. about using some new brushes given to me by my super awesome wife. I'm using these cheap ones, but I think I've got these Simmons Round. Got a three pack here. It's a 5.0 and a 2. So there's a good wash brush, a detail brush, and then like a basic like, I'll probably get the most use out of this zero, but there's some pretty good contrast. It's pretty good variety. I don't you know. These are maybe 10 or $12 for the three. So we'll see if they're worth it. So they call it a spotter around and around. Okay. A little soap on it just to get it loosened up. We'll see how it does. Now I can blame it on the brush, right? <laughs> All right, so get some uh, muddy olive here. Put that in there. A little more. And at first, I'm just going to go in and touch up any of those spots that I goofed with the gold. Just real quick. So right here. I even just start doing a little Shading, but throwing a little paint just on the edges where I want there to be a little more of a brighter green. Paint those edges real quick. Top of this thing. Top of that guy. Just paint it that way. Get them nuts.
So, lesson learned. Be more careful than I was. Talking about saving time and not saving any. Chalky. Look chalky to you guys? About the least smooth paint I've seen. Wonder if this, uh. Hopefully this paint isn't bad. Basically, I just uh, took some more out of the bottle, and instead of thinning it at all, I just pulled it out. It's thicker than I would normally use. You can see it texturing just a little bit, but let's see what it's going to do here. That's weird. It had a bit of a cloudiness to it. It's all right, though work with it. I have things that get darker. You can always hit the uh, corner edges there with a little bit of a darker green. to off a of green here. See if it gives me what I want. Looks a lot better. All right. Change of plan now using pale camouflage blue, or just camouflage Luftwaffe green I don't know what's going on with that muddy olive I'll have to mess around with that later but the paint's irritating me so I am going to move on just keeping the paint on the edges that would have a brighter color. Not trying to go down into the recesses where that wash is laid down. Since I went over so much of this, I'm just gonna do the whole thing real quick. Be the one of those days. I do seem to like this brush though. I'm basically just tracing in between all the significant details here just to kind of accentuate the lighter color because that will be part of the plan later on with the highlights. How many tanks total are you doing, Roy? I'm not getting rid of the original green color, I'm leaving it in the areas where 
I know I want a little bit of highlight. I say I should say shadow, not highlight. The opposite of what I meant. Trying to work quickly just to get the green where it needs to go. The dark green and the difference between these two greens, that I've one that I've got already on the tank, the one that I am not happy with, and this color is not that significant. So trying to get every single thing covered completely is just going to be like counter counterproductive. See, you're starting to get the beginnings of some highlights. Nice, man. You're making lots of progress. It's a lot of work. I appreciate what goes into that. Are you using an airbrush, Roy, or are you just uh, doing just brush work? I have my airbrush, and I 
need to make room in the garage, and then I will start using an airbrush. I'm actually pretty excited. My excited place. Brush work, blood and tears. <laughs> well, good for you, man. If they look like the rest of your uh, 88s and stuff, man, they're gonna look good. that might come back up. So that one wasn't my fault. I just don't know what that paint's doing. I will mess around with it sometime. Figure out if it's just getting ready to get thrown away or if there's something that I might have done or I don't know what, but ain't nobody got time for that right now. No, Roy, I haven't checked it out yet. Uh, I need to check those out. Where'd you post them? All right, we're gonna start working with this goblin green. Yeah, I figured they were on Facebook, man, but what page? <laughs> So I'm doing, let's see here, let me get this out of the way. That's the goblin green. And I'm just gonna add a touch of this Luftwaffe just to get that color in there because I'm not looking to go super bright. And as you can see, it's already, this is the Luftwaffe right here. So when you see them next to each other, it's a change. And we're gonna thin this up this to be more glazy. I could put glaze medium on there, but you can glaze with water. Just need to add a little more water here. When I do 
do this when I bring it up like I'm watching it come back down almost like seeing the legs on a glass of wine if you're familiar and that's kind of what I'm looking for because as it moves away I know that's what I'm getting that's my that's my actual opacity they're not a big thick layer and that's what I want Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll hit you hit your page up and take a look, man. I like seeing new stuff. Feeling bad about myself for not getting my own stuff done. Anybody else working on anything tonight? It's just Roy and me. All right, let's see how this lays down. I'm starting on the outer edge. gonna mellow. I think I'm gonna grab a little bit of just a wet brush here. Feather it. Pushing it outward to where I want the highlight to be. And let it dry for a little bit to see what I want to do next. The nice thing is, is I've got more Luftwaffe green, obviously, so I can make a a mid-tone between those two. Some colors, depending on how far you're going and depending on what colors they are, merge better than others. I'm sure there's some sort of like artistic explanation to that, but I didn't go to art school and I also didn't look it up before I started this video, so if you know the answer, that's cool, but I just know that it seems certain things work easier than others. Putting on their thin. See, there's maybe like a little more color here. Just gonna come back and just kind of hit that. So use a little bit of a dabbing motion to kind of fill in those spots. That's still wet, so I'm gonna just move on to a different area. And this. Thin, I'm gonna do some freehand on in one of my videos. So I'm gonna do the top edge and maybe this outer side. But I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it because this whole area here is gonna have a uh, freehand on it and the other side's probably gonna have a decal. So this side I'll probably need to do a little bit more. But that's what I was talking about, having a plan. Of course, you know, having a plan and then actually executing the two different things. But that's my intent. This edge on the top here. have to you don't have to work at something and cover it up these are the biggest flat surfaces here except for the top so I'm just kind of getting a feel for the paint I also haven't painted in a long time I'm doing some some glaze work. I think what it is is that it's probably still a little too thick. I'm actually going in and grabbing just a little bit of the Luftwaffe green in between brush loads here. going for perfect because I can still come back in here and in these grooves and I can add a wash. I'm not going to do like a cover up the green wash but come back in and hit these areas if I get a little too close to these edges in some spots. You can almost just you know, use it as a touch up. Let's see. Take some of this out a little bit and I'm going to thin it even more. Some of the uh, Goblin Green and Luftwaffe Green mix. I've got it even thinner. Probably more glaze-like now than the previous version. Now I'm just laying it on wet. Let's see how that does. Getting it out to 
the edge here. I'm not saying it's color theory, but it's color theory. Outlaw Mike, welcome. How are you doing? So now what I'm doing is I've, I've got a thinned layer of this Goblin Green Luftwaffe mix, and this is still wet, so I've got to let that dry. So all I'm going to do is just move on to a different area. So I'm still working this. The back end, I might as well just keep working the thin. Do both sides here. Brighten it up just a little more. And then I'm unloading my brush on the paper towel so it's still damp. And I'm just kind of pulling the paint a little bit at the where the tide mark or the edge line would be. Just to kind of break it up a little bit. And then I'm going to let this dry. And then I've got a thin version of the mix of paint that I've thinned even more. I'll show you that real quick. I took this paint here and put some water and just set it up over here. And it's even thinner. It's, you know, it's very translucent. And that's what's sitting right here drying. And that's what I'm going to put on this tail here in just a few moments once it's completely dry. In fact, this side's dry. And I'll use that. as the middle. And I know I said I wasn't gonna spend too much time on that side, but honestly I don't I don't mind the practice right now. I'm starting here and I'm as I move my brush, I'm going towards where I want the the brightest color. I'm bringing it out to this outer edge so I can control where it goes at the dark to light transition line and then as I flick my brush up that last little spot where it touches the, the miniature is where the most amount of pigment is going to reside. So I want that obviously out towards this edge because if I was painting this way, it's going to get a, a lighter color here, which is what I'm trying to avoid and not have in the first place. You guys starting to see how this uh, highlight blend thing action works? I'm doing great, Mike, other than the fact that I am way out of practice from painting. I'm painting like a new guy. Not that there's anything wrong with being new. I'm just... I definitely have had a few penguins fall off the iceberg since I've been gone in, uh, since February, so. So it's still, like I said, it's still a drab base green, but I know it's starting to look more vibrant. Um, but that is also something I'm working on as a artist is that since I have no particular style, <laughs> none that anyone can go, oh yeah, that's that's my style. I don't uh, I don't have anything that really is a trademark B1B flyer or whatever, other than taking too long to get stuff painted. I am trying to brighten or over exaggerate my colors and highlights. So by doing that, I am going to try to get more pop to my miniature. I'm not I'm not trying to go super super crazy cartoony anime all that kind of stuff but I definitely have a lot more of a subdued style. I, I tend to paint what I think would look realistic and unfortunately when you're staring at something from less than a foot away it's great but when you see it on the table it just doesn't it just doesn't stand out so um, I'm not giving up completely on the how I do things. I'm just starting to expand my techniques and expand my options with color and uh, vibrancy and just overall highlights in general uh, I have that non-battletech miniature that I painted and I just I basically said I'm gonna highlight this thing until I am I am unable to look at it <laughs> so I just kept going and going and you know it's, it's fine I mean I know how to highlight but uh, just taking it to a level where someone would go, oh wow, that, that really pops. So, all right, so now I'm using that, that base color there. See, it's, I'm just putting it on this edge. That's where I want that. That light to catch.
try not to, and when you're using paints like, you know, with, uh, either a glaze or something you thin down to use as a glaze, you know, a little bit in here, but that's fine, I can touch that up. Another nice thing is it does dry right away, so you can fix things like that. That's much easier. Um, is you can't get impatient. You just, you just have to accept that you just kind of need to, like you can see me, I'm just, I'm just going around the miniature. I'm not stick, sitting at one panel, painting and painting, oh, I don't like that, touch it up to it. You can't do that with it. It just, it just doesn't work. The paint won't set up, and then you'll end up pulling paint off of the panels that you're trying to get it to lay down on, and you get uneven. Basically, you're, you're inducing brush strokes. If that makes sense. So you just have to relegate yourself to the fact that you you can't just do the panel in one shot and then move on and be done with it. And think, oh yeah, I'm making making progress in a linear fashion. It's it's very circular. I am not a, a, I've been painting a long time, but I am not a grizzled veteran. <laughs> And then I also got something pretty cool. I used this on that uh, that the rocket launcher on that 25 millimeter miniature that's not at my desk right now, otherwise I would show it to you. But I bought this. This is Quickshade Military Shader, and this stuff seems pretty cool. Um, I might even try it on this just to demonstrate how it looks. But unfortunately, since I've already done a wash on this to get those those areas darkened, it, it might not show up as much. But this this is what I'm going to use, I think, to fix any areas that need a little darkening or to readdress the crevices and the panel lines and things. But uh, and I, I might put some in here just to get um, just to get a little bit more of a transition. We'll see how it lays down here. I'll got to wait for this to dry. But um, so far, I've been very happy with this quick shade military shader. If you if you paint green or anything that's related to green, uh, might be something for to consider. Add a little water to my paints that are drying out. What are we looking at here? Oh, hour and 15. I'm also trying to not be, not stream for as long, unless, I mean, folks are wanting me to to be on here. I know that the longer I'm on, the more folks can actually come watch me paint, but if you're going to jump in, you know, halfway through or get bored, either way, you know, it doesn't necessarily appeal to everyone, but I think there's a magic time that most folks are going to want to view and that they're going to have other things like real life to do, which I'm, I completely understand. I'm the same way. I can't sit and watch YouTube for seven at well. I'm not supposed to sit and watch YouTube for seven or eight hours a day. I mean I haven't, but or Twitch. Alright, so here I am. I saw a little bit of heavy pigment here, and because this is a glaze, I actually intentionally went in and moved the pigment. Um, I know I said don't work it too much, but if I see something, if I'm quick, if you're quick enough, you can catch it early. But what happens is it, this this area here is, was all wet, and it starts to dry and move in. And if you start to go over it again, the part in the middle that's not wet, that's not dry, you'll move your brush over it, and then it will lift off, and you'll have the darker color underneath, and you have a bullseye right here. You know, or you'll get a little tide mark or something as you go, you know, across this this area here, and it's not dry, and then you've got you know that to contend with. So as you can see I, I'm, I'm doing it on purpose. I'm inducing some of that just so you can see that there's there's a method to glazing and it's it's not a hurry up and get the paint on the model it's more of a hurry up and wait I'm actually digging this green I'm, 
I'm glad I had to go to that Luftwaffe one, and then now I'm glad that I mixed that with the Goblin Green. I think it looks good. Yeah, we need more Grizzled Veterans. I gotta have somebody teach me how to, how to do this. For these small panels, I'm just hitting the top. thing is about the smaller ones is that just a little bit of color at the top edge it doesn't need to be a huge transition it, it gets the desired effect just based on its size is it you don't have to have paint over the whole thing in fact if you painted the whole thing a solid color it actually looks like it's not highlighted you like, do what looks cool, do what you can. It's another, I don't know, we start with a bunch of Bob Rossisms too, happy little panel lines. All right, so now I'm moving into the glaze, the thinner, the thin glaze. I'm just laying that right over the transitions. I guess if you're just doing one uh, one thing, then you got to once you get through them all, then you're you're stuck waiting for those to dry. Unless you're doing multiple elements, but if you're just stuck on the tracks, then yep, hurry up and wait. This again with a little bit of the glaze. I'm just looking for areas where it's maybe not as even. Psycho does this way better than I do. I am not. I am not the world's best blender. Usually, the way I get my desired result is by just relentlessly being frustrated until I either figure it out or stumble across it, and then I get, you know, hey, get lucky. So we'll definitely throw some military shader on the back of this one. I'm gonna just mess around with it just to see because hey why not Cleaning up this line back here I got a little bit of that crevice there I've got my tablet up on my desk so I can actually read the comments and I try to that way I'm not constantly taking away there you know, some of the panel lines on the vehicle are big, are brightest towards the outside of the vehicle, like at the rear, and others just forward of the turret are brightest toward the center of the vehicle, and then the nose is toward the center again. How do you decide how to build from dark to light, and which direction goes from? Sorry, I missed it earlier. Okay, well, if I okay, um, so outlaw Mike, so there's there's two ways to do this. There's what's called zenithal. I just got a drop of water here. Zenithal painting, where they take you know you you prime it, say black. 
and then you do like at a 45 or a 30 degree angle or whatever. So there's videos on Zenithal highlighting, Zenithal painting, Zenithal blending, uh, Zenith, Zenithal. Some people say Zenthial, I guess I mispronounced. Anyway, the point is that's how you can see where you would highlight a natural light source from one direction. Now my light source for painting is all the way around. So uh, what I've kind of relegated to doing in, in most cases is just highlighting what I think would catch light and look cool from like almost like a, a top down um, type of light source because first off that's kind of what I'm seeing and second off I if, if I if I really want to stick to just one angle I'd have a couple miniatures I've painted that are like that uh, you, you can do it it's fine but the problem is is that let's say the lights coming from say that this the, the tanks left hand side this whole side over here would basically stay dark and it would look boring so because I would have to highlight this a lot and then any highlights I do here would have to be in in contrast or in conjunction with this side so they can't be brighter than this side but at the same time if they're dark it's kind of it's hard to dark highlight uh, I mean this I mean this it would be like painting a shadow I'd almost be basically getting to dark grays and even blacks in some areas if that makes sense it's not something you can't do and I think it works better for like true strict uh, light source highlighting on organic miniatures like you know soldiers troops uh, things like that animals uh, just because they look more natural whereas this tank I mean I you know I've never seen a, a Pegasus hover tank up close I imagine it would be pretty big um, but the, the problem is that six millimeter scale the between detail and size the uh, got fuzz on the top of this one the, the the overall effect gets lost just like I was talking about when I was painting hold on let me pull these up these right here you know the, the heat effects on this I mean yeah someone was like oh I would have used a darker blue or I would use transparent washes and like that. that's great and all if you're if your gun or if your tank or your whatever gun barrel is you know it's like I mean this isn't even that big but I mean that's a 25 millimeter miniature here I mean what's the scale how big is there are those machine and those are even you know those could be far what I would say are big for machine guns but at this scale you, you just really have to get something to pop it's just not a it's not a large miniature now for this Gertel GA, I think that's how you pronounce it. I mean, you know, I'm thinking about doing the heat effects, but I think that's a, a Gauss rifle, which to me it would get hot. Um, so, but I, you know, auto cannons and like that. I have a couple next things that have uh, auto cannons, but you know, this is a nice big area, and this is one where I would definitely do a, a more of the washes versus what I did here, which were kind of quasi glazes and laying paint down. But you can see with the size difference, I mean, you can't you can't have something this big or I'm sorry, this small and have the same paint style for the two. I know that the scale difference, it's the same quote scale, but the, just the sheer size of this miniature. And you know, you'll see on some of those bigger ones, the 32 millimeter, 35 millimeter scale, there's got, you know, or the, the epic, you know, what is it? Epic scale or hero, heroic scale for Games Workshop, which, you know, giant like flamethrowers and things like that. So uh, I know that's probably a long winded answer, but I'm, I mean, I'm glad you asked because I mean, I have a, a opinion on it. It doesn't make me right. It's just what I tend to do because this is what I am able to consistently do and I feel it looks, I get a good result, one that I'm happy with. And that's the thing is if, if I'm not happy with something, I'm not gonna either keep painting it or I'm not gonna finish it. And then, you know, it doesn't do me any good and I don't make any progress, I don't advance as an artist, so on and so forth. And it, it's, again, it's not a right or wrong, it's just simply what I do. And I just tend to do more of a light almost directly over the top in most cases. Um, or I'll just pick a side and say it's slightly from this side and then I stick with that. I think I've got, a, oh, it's not over here either. I've got an Orion where I did that where they're all to one side. But then again, even then, there is going to be a side to that miniature where there shouldn't be any, but I still put it on there because you know you gotta be consistent. Otherwise it just looks weird. It looks like it's in a shadow. And then when you go to photograph it and there's light everywhere, then now I'm talking with my hands, there is a, um, it just doesn't, it doesn't photograph right either. So it's, it's, it's more situational, kind of like that cell shading uh, technique that some of those uh, anime modelers are doing, which, I mean, that looks awesome. And I think it'd be great to do on a miniature once, but it's definitely not gonna be something that's gonna, um, you know, there's one angle where that'll look good, and then everything else is gonna be, oh, it kind of looks, it's gonna look off. It's gonna look odd. Your eye is gonna be like, oh, that, that doesn't quite add up. And your brain's gonna be sitting there going, well, I don't know why it kind of looks like that, but I don't know. Anyway, now I'm just rambling. 
So, I think I came down a little too far with those front panels, and I'd like to get a little more definition, so I'm going to add back a little more of this straight Luftwaffe camo. Work that back. Well, those are still drying, but I got some down here that I can Sure, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy to talk about it. Again, it doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm right. It just means that's my opinion, man. Digging the green? Do you think it's a little too bright? Is it too uh, what uh, chemical slime looking? That's kind of what I was worried about. Was it, it might look too uh, unnatural? But Now, once you get several of these panels kind of working at once, you can, like, as you can see, I'm, I go and I, I touch up here. I got a color on my palette, or on my brush, I should say. I go and I I move it, get my paint where I want, and then, oh, okay, I'm going to touch up a spot over here with the same. You have to be careful as to what you have on your brush, but if I'm doing a, a mid-blend tone, and I see, oh, I've got a little still of a, a line here on transition, I go, oh, I'll just add a quick touch to that. Okay, oh, look around. Oh, add a quick touch to this or that. It, you can end up in a, a constant loop if you're not careful, but uh, it's just something that this will help s speed up that process of while you're waiting for these glazes to to cure up. See, these are I can still see these are still a little damp, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna let them do their thing because you see I had to bring them back because that that uh, lighter yellow or jeez oh, <laughs> green is coming down and I just got a little too much, so I want to work that back kind of into the middle of the panel to really just give you that that gradient and here see it's darker over here and it got kind of bright over here and even with me bringing this Luftwaffe green back in it's still not as dark so I'm gonna throw a little bit more on there and then I'm gonna hit my glaze real quick with, I haven't cleaned off the brush and just go right along the edge of both again so it's still wet basically I'm wet blending and then I'll see how that turns out. I'll probably end up letting that dry, throwing just a straight, with a clean brush, straight uh, for the uh, mixed glaze, the highlight glaze on there, and then see how that functions. Oh no, it's going. Um, and then I'll still eventually, like I said, I'm gonna throw that military shader down here in a little bit just to get, get you guys a chance to see that. So we got about 30 minutes left on this two hour session. Looking pretty good. So here, Comparison shot, you can see which one do you like better. I mean, the golds are equal. You guys have seen me highlight gray, and honestly, these are rounded surfaces, so it's going to be just a quick light color here, and then uh, mid mid tone kind of a glaze in between the two, or even put it on the first this high ridge, and then just like I just showed you, keep with your brush loaded, go down slightly, pick a thin color between the two. Um, that you, you've mixed and just run your brush along the two and then you get your highlight you get a blend and then you've got that darker color at the bottom 
I mean, really, it's it means a hover skirt. So I don't think there's too much too much to it. I don't really want to spend a whole ton of time painting that. Yep, third Canopian Fusiliers, green and gold. Magistry of Canopus. I've been on a Magistry of Canopus kick lately. I got all that yellow stuff done, and now I'm wanting to get these done. The reason I want to do this, you know, this these are my tester models for doing uh, Naomi Centrella's uh, Cataphract, which I haven't built yet because I have a ton of other models over here that I still need to paint, and I promised myself from my New Year's resolution that I was going to finish all these models before I started building new ones. So far, I've held up my plan, but that's simply because I've been out of the country for the last two and a half months. See how it holds up here. I've been, I think I've been doing okay. I haven't done anything yet. All right, so I'm gonna loosen this paint up just a little bit. Too loose. Hitting all the little domes. I'm not gonna do the, uh, the little nuts or bolts just yet. So in theory, this top of the tank would be the brightest. Again, do what you want, do what looks cool. I'm just pushing this loose pigment around a little bit. At some point I'll need to stop and let it do its thing, but I'm trying to keep the contrast from the, the wash that you didn't get to see that had been done. That was probably, I've been working on this miniature for over a year. I say working, it's been sitting on my desk for over a year. I'm working on it now. And that's still wet. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that is still drying. But you can see the difference in working with thin paints. If I were to have just taken out of the bottle and thrown that on there, it'd be a hard line. It would be, you know, a lot of contrast, and it would probably be kind of thick. Not all paints out of the bottle are thick, but it, it seems that it, in most of the cases, out of the bottle, it's too thick to use. for a lot of the purposes that I do it. Come back and do that one again. So so now this is damp. There's nothing I can do about it right now. I'll need to come back. And it, it just got out of control. It capillary action took it into the corners. So no big deal. Just too much paint on my brush. Wipe it away. Move on to a different area. Let it dry. The glazing technique. I'm also dabbing. Not necessarily dragging my brush. That's just because I know this paint is still curing so that I don't move it around. And if I, it seems that it, if you dab it, it tends to not run away and lift off as easily. Run away. thing is you can always come back and just dot those bolts with a little bit of wash or shading medium and they will go back to looking just as good as they did now but if you're able to do it now you'll just get that much more of an effect the 
dabbing prevent the brush from unloading too quickly? You know, either I have too much paint on my brush or I don't. I don't, I think more, here, let me demonstrate. So if I'm, if I'm doing my wash, use a lighter color, my wash. If I'm doing my painting and I'm using a glaze, I'm painting my, putting my, my paint down like this, it's still wet, it's, it's drying. If I still work it again, what's gonna happen is, is that paint where I, my brush went is gonna lift off and it's gonna end up being darker in that spot. When I dab, let me get it real wet here. When I dab from the tip of the brush, you see it, it moves outward instead of being pulled in a direction. So that tip of that brush is not trying to take that paint off of the surface that it's on. It's simply just capillary action coming off of the bristles and going down onto the model. And when you lift the brush up, the last thing to touch the, the model is that center spot. And due to uh, surface tension in the water and the paint, the medium, it fills in that spot. Does that make sense? And, and I'm not mashing it in either. That's, it's not good for the tip of your brush, obviously, if you're painting that style, but I'm, I'm gently just coaxing the paint to go where I want it to go. myself everything but I'll tell you I do enjoy a hamburger. That rib burger sounds awesome. So you can see there's a little bit of a spot here where the green crept up into the cre into the crevice there so No big deal. I told you I was going to talk about that military shader since we don't have too much time left. I didn't do that side yet, but I got that side. Okay. Letting that front dry. So this is military shader. Mess around with this. I'm just going to use it straight out of the bottle. I'm not going to thin it, I'm not going to add any medium to it, because I did last time when I was using it, I've only used it one other time, so I'm just going to go with what I know works. I'm just going to load up my brush, I'm going to throw this in these crevices for now, where I know I got a little, a little wily with the paint. So the nice thing is, is that if you're working on a, a, a tone of a, or this overall color of this is green and it's dark tone. So I could actually use this green on just about anything and it would look visually okay. It's, it's, it's acceptable. So uh, don't think that, you know, oh, I got to switch to a black down here. I mean, you can, it's fine, but I mean, I could, I could use this green and it would, it would still, your eye would be like, oh yeah, it looks right. So. a little bit of the delineation down here in between these. This takes a little while to dry. I got a lot on my brush here. So I'm going to try to fix these with it. I'm trying to find the right amount of load on this brush.
just because I talked about it. I'm going to do these bolts and raised areas. I'm doing this before I've hit any like edge highlighting. I wouldn't necessarily always do that. But again, for the sake of time and getting these different demonstrations and techniques shown. I'm uh, throwing them down. Throwing it down. It's a throwdown. So yeah, I mean, look, I mean, already, look at, I mean, I think that, there we go. I think that shader, the military shader, the green shader looks really good. I think it really does a great job of just adding a little bit of that zing. Or just really drawing your eye to what you've done and then kind of encompassing the whole overall miniature by giving you that nice dark contrast, especially if you spend all that time doing the highlighting. Let's see. Throw a little more down here. So you don't always have to do a coverage wash, you can just do details. Coming along pretty nicely, guys. Yeah, those shadows were really good. Now, this is a brighter green. I mean, on a darker green, you're not going to get such a dramatic effect. But, I mean, I've got plenty of brighter greens than this, and I'm more than happy with the, the level of contrast that it, it gives you. I mean, in, in one or two coats, it really, you know, gives you that, oh, look, there's detail here. Now there's a shadow. Now it shows. Now it really, you know, makes it look like, oh, yeah, you've got you've got some nice detail on there. Now I still need to go back and actually just touch the tops of these, which I will do with maybe the, the brightest highlight color that I'm going to use. But the point is, is now the work the work is mostly done on that. And then this, this back end here, you can see, let me do this. There we go. You can really see how it's really brought a lot of those blends together. And I got to, you know, there's still a little couple of, of lines where I could go back and hit it with the glaze, but I think it really brings back some of that shadow and then it blends that shadow much more smoothly, especially like at that vertical fin. Oops. Right here. I think that looked, that looks really good. So, uh, no, it's not here. Let me show you what it looks like. So right out of the, Right out of the bottle, again, so uh, Army Painter Quick Shades, uh, and this, you might have missed that question, are thicker than a wash. And I'll just I'll just show you that right now. So here's what it looks like when I take a drop of that. All right, you can see it kind of, I'm not going to say not syrupy. I don't know what it's like. Um, but that's that's the, the Quick Shades, and all the Quick Shades out of the bottle look like that. 
And then for demonstrating purposes here, this is uh, sepia ink. And out of the bottle, this is what it looks like. It's definitely more, um, it's definitely more thinned down. So it's not a whole lot. Don't. It's not super dry. I mean, I mean, and I think they're these washes here, the uh, the actual like tank washes and stuff. Um, these I think are even even looser than than this one. Um, but and I think the sepia ink I've had for a while it might have actually started to, to just dry out a little bit. It's, um, but yeah, so you get you get a nice level of control with these. You know, you, you can almost just kind of move it around. It's, you know what? It's it's almost like a almost like a PVA glue consistency. It's not sticky, but it's, you know, it's workable. And then this isn't too much looser, but it's definitely more so. Syrupy. Yeah, there you go. Syrupy. I don't know. Some of this up. But I mean, just with anything, I mean, I'm sure there's people that like to thin them down. I'm sure there's people that like their washes thinner. I'm sure there's people that are, or not as not as thin. Same thing with these quick shades. Some just probably people that don't like the quick shades, I'm sure. But um, I've had good luck with them. I really like them. I keep trying to find a better use for the soft tone just because, or maybe I just don't paint anything that needs soft tone. Um, lighter colors and things like that. I always use the dark and the strong. Those are the strong typically gets used the most. Got about another 10 minutes. Let me finish up this panel here and try to touch up these last little bits of um, contrast. I know I didn't get to that last highlight. I'm just running the perpendicular edge just to make sure that that edge gets bit of color. Because that will get just a touch of that lighter green I was talking about as well. Strong tone on yellows. I'd have to go back and watch my video, Mike. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. I'm pretty sure I did. And that, I mean, that that's a quick way to do yellow. That's not necessarily the most proper way to do yellow that's just a hey if you want to get yellow painted and have it look pretty good that was my intent because if I was painting a box full of those miniatures or if someone had a company of those uh, yellow uh, yellow miniatures they wanted to paint up then yeah I mean yellow is frustrating white's frustrating I'm gonna do a video on white here not too long once I get my groove back but um, yeah it's it, I'll be the first to admit the most efficient way to do whites and yellows is with an airbrush hands down and I've, I've never done them with an airbrush but I've watched people do it and I was like yeah that is so much better than sitting there with a brush and having to worry about all the the gotchas and the um, pitfalls yes yellow is the devil that's why I did it that's why I was like yep I'm gonna do this yellow just to prove that you know, it's not the the worst thing in the world if you if you have some techniques and you're you know, and again it's not it's not like they're perfect. But at least they're not you know, just awful. <laughs> So what I'm doing now, if you haven't noticed, is with this glaze, that because these paints never actually fully cured, I'm actually messing around with the edge to get it kind of where I want it, or to soften it up. Just a little bit of feathering.
I, I still can't bring myself to do black um, underneath a white. I, I know that's how you get the most contrast. It's just that the way I paint white and the coverage uh, that I get and the amount of work it takes to get that black up to or up to a actual vibrant white, it's just too much for me. If, like I said, if I had an airbrush, I would do it because I've seen people do it and I know it's not impossible it, or you know as time consuming. But with brush work, I just I avoid doing that just to save a ton of time. And I mean the result, yeah. If you're doing a show showpiece miniature, yeah, the result is pretty drastic. Tried with an airbrush, not through the yellow. I'll have to check that video out once I uh, finish up here. Or uh, pictures, looks like. just nitpicking a little bit and just kind of going back and just touching things that I want to have just a, a little bit more edge color but and you can see I think that that military shader and then just that couple of glazes back on that transition line I and mean, again I'm not looking for perfect I just want I mean at a glance if you see this I mean, yeah I'm zoomed in but if you see this from where I'm sitting I, I mean I'm backed up and I was like yeah it's, it looks fine so you know and that's what I'm what I'm trying to get a little more here is I'm not going for super perfection. I just want something that looks good and has a little bit of you know pop to it, but doesn't take you know three days of me sitting there blending back and forth to finally get the ratio and the the transition and oh man I don't like the brush strokes on that one. I got to go back and do it again because I've done that. I've been spent way too long on certain things and just gone back and forth and end up fighting myself more than I'm making progress. So here, here's a good example for the shadow. So for this side of this turret, I didn't put any paint down here. I left it alone completely. And I basically just went and came down to the halfway point because it's kind of a an angled inward shape. If you look from the back, it's kind of angled inward. So because my light's coming from this side, I did put more color on this one. And I did come down further, but on this side, I'm just not going as much, but I'm still putting, I'm still gonna put the full highlight up on the edges. So my tech, you know, my way of doing it is like, yeah, the light's coming down from the top. And that way I don't have to go to super dark shadows on one side or in areas and then I can't photograph the miniature from that side because it looks odd or from with a light source that's anything other than from where I painted the light source from. So. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. Any, prim, primer is a complete preference. There is no wrong, oh, you always have to prime this color to get this result. There's a guy that I watched, he, he primed in green to paint red. He primed the miniature green on purpose to paint red. So, and it looks beautiful, it looks gorgeous. So um, different things, different colors do different things beneath other colors. So all paint's translucent to a degree and you're just manipulating that. So don't, uh, don't think that, oh man, you gotta get white primer because you can only paint white with white primer. It's just what I personally do. Um, I just find I'm, it's, it gets me an easier result for the way that I paint it. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of people that go, oh, I can't believe you paint white like that. It takes forever. Or I can't believe you paint white like that. You should use, use an airbrush. But I mean, here's here's some white that I did. It's not it's not finished, but this is the same as the catapult I did with shooting the missiles. This is the 22nd Benjamin regulars. 
and I go in and I do the white, and then I do my details, and I do the wash, and then, then I go back and I do the white again, so then I kind of get these kind of faded edges. You can kind of see I try not to go all the way back to the edge, and I'll do more so when I go to the actual bright white color, and then I age it. But it takes a long time, especially on something with tons of panels like this, just tons of panels. And even then, it's still not a perfect, like, clean white. Um, clean white, it, it's it's even more. I mean, I don't even I don't even try to wash a miniature doing clean white. You just have to. I, it's more of like a panel line where I'm just running the panel lines because if you tr do it over the surface, you just end up fighting it over and over again. Yep, absolutely. Like I said, if it, if it works for you and you're happy with it, that's what matters. Just like, for instance, I'm happy with this tank. Honestly, I, I didn't think it was going to look this good in the amount of time that I was going to paint it. So here's, I did the gold on this one, obviously, for the folks that maybe showed up later, but that's that's where we got. So And, I, and the gold I spent the first 45 minutes doing, because I, you guys watched me, I made a ton of mistakes. So in an hour and 15 minutes, I've got that kind of green. I haven't done that, that pop highlight yet, and I still have some front panels to work a little bit. But, you know, I'm talking my way through it and obviously answering some questions and kind of showing you some other stuff with the paint. But I guarantee in an hour I could have gotten this far, which means that in two hours I could have had these to this to this level. And then after that, maybe 10, 20 minutes of, of little pop highlights, you know, things like that. You know, I've, I've done a video on jeweling, you know, aging, weathering, paint chips, all that kind of stuff. Now it doesn't get the skirts done, but, I'm you know, I'm just saying that. You know, once you kind of know what you're doing and working with glazes, oh, I don't want to wait for them to dry. I mean, it, I mean, even this mod model, I didn't have to switch models. I just worked in a different area while I was letting letting it dry. So, you know, lots of good, lots of good stuff. I'm glad you guys had your questions. I'm glad you guys were here to, uh, you know, ask those things that I either haven't thought about or have actually not had to verbalize. But uh, you know, artist theory, color theory, who you know, who's right with you know primers and whatnot you know that's all that's all relative it's all relative i do have a logitech c920 is what my computer is telling me so i do need to mess around with that white balance yeah thanks i appreciate it mike i'm uh hopefully gonna get like i said i'm looking at trying to get faster looking at trying to be more uh, vibrant and more exaggerated in my highlights so that when you see the miniature from tabletop distance you know standing behind your forces that it just it really catches your eye i mean up close i mean you know doesn't <laughs> you know i mean there are people that are going to pick up your miniatures and look at them closely and that's fine you know i can spot flaws in my stuff i spot flaws and all sorts of things but it's not about that it's about being happy with it and uh, getting it out on the table and getting it some, some good use and not having a primer or bare metal army, right? Am I right? Am I right? Shutdown sequence initiated. <laughs>